Hi, my name is Brandy Emerson, and I choose to do neonate assessment for our peer teaching videos. After birth, a baby will be weighed, cleaned up, and tested for certain signs of de developmental problems that could require urgent attention. There are three assessments that I'm going to go over with you, but just so you know, the APGAR scale is the most widely known and used within our healthcare systems today. The APGAR scale. The APGAR scale is widely used to assess the health of a newborn between one and five minutes following their birth. This is a simple assessment to indicate how the baby is doing at birth and whether or not the baby is going to need any additional medical assistance. This scale evaluates the infant in five distinct areas. They evaluate the infant's heart rate, their respiratory rate, their muscle tone, their body color, as well as their reflex irritability. The OB or nurse assisting the OB will be the one to give the newborn a score of a 0, a 1, or a 2 on each of the five health signs. If a baby re receives a total reading of 7 to 10, this indicates that the newborn's condition is good and they will need little inter medical intervention or none to strive in the world. If a baby receives a total reading of, of 5, this might indicate developmental difficulties. And if a baby would ever receive a score of 3 or below, this is automatically going to signal an emergency to, on, to the uh, nurse and doctors on staff and indicate that the baby may not survive outside of the womb. The scale is especially good at assessing the newborn's ability to be able to cope with the stresses of delivery as well as their new environment after delivery. It helps to identify the high-risk infants that are in need of resuscitation. This is important because as a healthcare provider, we need to know when to step in and when we need to put interventions in to help a baby strive in our environment. Up to the right, it shows a picture of a baby and this is the APGAR score rates. When they're looking at the respiration, they're looking for the baby to be crying. Their reflexes, they need to have irritability to their reflexes. They obviously need to have a heart rate um, to have a pulse, and then they're looking at the skin color of the body and extremities and muscle tone. Here's another picture of the APGAR scale, and this is very similar to the one that was in our book. On, on the left, it shows the feature that's evaluated, and to the right, it shows how many points are given for each and um, what to look for as far as having a perfect score and then one that is going to need help or further medical intervention. To the right here is also how the baby is rated on the APGAR scale. APGAR does stand for appearance, pulse, grimace, activity, and respiration. The items on the left hand side will give a baby a low score of zero for that level and then the items on the right hand side give the baby the best possible score on each category which comes to be a 2. The next um, assessment that I'm going to go over with you is the Brazelton Neonatal Behavior Assessment Scale, also known as NBAS. This assessment usually takes place within, within the first 24 to 36 hours after the baby is born. Now, if you remember, the APGAR scale takes um, place within the first couple of minutes after the baby is born. And if for some reason the baby has a low APGAR scale, it is going to get reevaluated five minutes later. On the NBAS, this is a neural behavior assessment of the newborn that's basically designed to document the newborn's contribution to the parent infant system, the competencies, and the individual differences of the newborn, as well as other difficulties that could arise that are there. This can be used as a sensitive index of neurological competence for up to a month after the birth for typical infants and can also be used to measure many measure to use as a measure within many studies of infant development. The main feature on this is that it is an interactive assessment that provides um, a clear profile of the baby's behavior and how it must feel to the parent. Basically, when they are doing this assessment, the examiner is going to facilitate the newborn's best performance. So they are going to uh, contain the newborn physically, if necessary, by swaddling so that the infant can be organized and alert as possible when they're tracking an object or turning to a sound. There are 28 behavioral items that are scored on a nine-point scale that assess the infant's response to positive and negative stimuli. Such material like torches, belts, rattles, etc. are used for that part of the assessment. There are also 18 reflex items, each 
scored on a four-point scale that assesses the infant's neurological status. There are seven supplemental items that are basically there to capture the range and the quality of the behavior of a frail, high-risk infant. So all in all, there are a total of 53 scorable features on the NBAS scale. This is basically just a picture of um, what they're looking for and the score that they're giving them. Like I said, they've got um, different categories. So they've got your behavior, the neurosensory, the gross motor, temporal patterns, um, sequences. So this is what they are using when they are when they're scoring a baby on the NBAS system compared to the APGAR, which is very few things. The neonatal intensive care unit network neurobehavior scale is another assessment um, of newborn's behavior, the stress and neuro the other stress and neurological responses and their regulatory capacities. This is also known as the NNS and this scale, unlike the Breselton, which is used on normal, healthy, full-term infants, may be used to assess the at-risk or high-risk infants. This assessment is basically beneficial uh, for use in evaluating the preterm infants uh, that were, or infants that were even exposed to substance abuse during prenatal development. This is my sources that I used. Um, I did use a lot of my information that I got was out of our book. I also used um, a couple websites.